So tell me, tell me one of my reactants and give me the chemical formula for it. Okay. You would start with magnesium nitrite. Okay, so what it does magnesium nitrite, what is the chemical formula for magnesium nitrite? If I'm correct, magnesium is Mg. Okay. And then nitrite is, I'm gonna butcher this one. N. N O. N O. Is it? Oh wait, is it three or four? N O. I believe it's a four. Nope. No, oh, I knew this would happen. <laughs> Uh, let me I get a product it. table. Hold on. Okay. Or your po or your uh, polyatomic ion table. Okay, Amanda, you're gonna save her. You're tapping in for her. Uh, yes. Okay. You want me to annotate? Yeah, if you want to annotate, go ahead. Okay. NO2. NO2, that's right. Okay. So is that mm -hmm. correct though? Mg NO2 and that's it? No. No? What else do I need to do to Plus. it? Plus. Oh wait. Oh. Is it? Then you put a plus react with a, phosphate. There's right? two nitrates. Oh, okay. Nitrate has a negative one charge and magnesium is positive two. Okay, so there's two nitrates. Oh, yeah, Are yeah. We done? Are we done with this one? Is there something yes. else I need to add? Oh, you got to put the AQ because it's solution. Okay, Amanda, now it's your turn. So what is the other reactant? Um, for sodium phosphate, is it NaPO4? Are you happy with that answer? Is it Na3? Okay. Yes? Okay. <laughs> Okay, is there anything else I need to add to that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Are you sure? Aqueous. Oh. Aqueous, that's right, AQ. Oh. Okay, okay Kayla, what's gonna be your product? Uh, magnesium phosphate and okay. sodium nitrate. Okay, even though I misspelled that. Oops. Okay, so what does uh, magnesium phosphate look like? What is the chemical formula? Uh, that is Mg. And you got PO4, and let's see how many. I think two PO4s and three magnesium. Okay. And then that be a uh, I don't know. Precipitant? I forgot what that one was. <laughs> what is a precipitant? Solid. Solid. So I always think of like precipitant as in drops. 
So something dropping out. So a solid. Okay, and you said sodium nitrate. What does that look like? So that would just be NaNO2, right? Is that it? And then aqueous. Okay. Is it balanced? No. It isn't, Christian. Are you sure? Mm. Okay, so what do I need to do then? Balance it. <laughs> okay, smart ass. Tell me how I'm gonna do that. <laughs> uh, so first you need to not label, but uh, write down what elements you have on each side. So you have, uh, so you know. So do you, should I break them down independently? Or yes, independently, independently, not as a whole. Them? No, I will, well, I mean the left side, the products on one side and the reactants on the other. The polyatomics are gonna stay together. Well, the polyatomics can stay together. Oh, because they're no. moving together. Is that yes. okay? Okay, so I can go like NO2. PO4 and then NA. Oh, cool. But I could do it the, the hard way, like Christian wanted me to do it too, right? <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't do it. Okay. So since they're moving together, I can actually still group them together. Okay, I get that. Okay, so can you tell me, Cassie, on my reactant side, tell me about magnesium. You have one magnesium, and on your product, you have three. Okay. Christian, tell me about nitrate, or nitrite, sorry. Nitrite. There's two on the left, and there is only one on the right. Let's see, Darlene, tell me about phosphate. Darlene, are you there? Hit your unmute button. Um, there's one phosphate on the reacting though. I did, then, can you hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so there's one phosphate on the reactant and two on the product. Okay. Uh, let's see. Jessica, tell me about the sodium. There's three on the reactant and one on the product. Okay, Judy, is it balanced? Um, uh, no. No, it's not balanced. So what do I need to do to balance it? Um, Where do I start? Um, you can start with the magnesium. Okay, so if I start with my magnesium, what am I gonna do? I will put a coefficient in front of the magnesium nitrite um, on the reactant side. Okay, I, I mean a three, I'm sorry. Okay, so I put a three mm -hmm. coefficient in front of the magnesium nitrite. So that tells me that I have three magnesium nitrites. Okay, so that means I have three magnesiums and then that changes my nitrite too. Judy, right. how many nitrites do I have now? Um, since you have two nitrites, um, you'll be multiplying that coefficient to that subscript, so it'd be six nitrites. Okay. Cool. Okay, so I have magnesium. It's three and three on both sides. Let's see. Leslie. Leslie, help me figure out what I need to do with the nitrites. Um, 
would you need to put a two in front of the NA? You said a two? Yeah. Well, I have six. So then how many nitrates will I have now? If I put a two in front of the NA. You'll have, um, you'll have four. I'll have four, but all I see here, NO, I see one. If I put two in front of it, is that gonna give me four? But I don't even want four, I want six, don't I? Because I have six now. So would you put a three? Okay, so if I put a three there, how many NOs do I have now? Six. That's six NOs? Are you sure? So you're telling me three, and I have, just looking at that NO, three times NO would be six? You would need a, instead of a three, you would need a would five, because then... No, no, I have five, a six. A six. I need a six. And a six times one gives you six. And you only have one NO. Okay, because this is NO, remember the coefficient is being multiplied by both ions in this case, because we're using the ion in this situation. So we have six sodium ions and we have six nitrate ions. And we want to have six nitrate ions. Okay, so we want to pay attention to that. If we were just looking at the oxygen, right, that would be something different. But we're looking at the whole ion together. Okay, you guys are clear on that? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Leslie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Leslie, now, does that change how many sodiums I have? Just the NAs. How many sodiums will I have? Six. Six. That's right. Good job. Okay. Preston. Yes, sir. Phosphates. Are they balanced? No. What do I need to do to balance them? Um, I would put a two on the reactant side. Okay. So that gives me two. And then how does that change my sodiums? Uh, two times three, six. Um, so are we good? Are we balanced now? Yeah. Piece of cake? Dr. Henry. Yes, ma'am. Would you say that it's easier just to write out the whole process first? Because I was trying to do our lab seven and I was running into some problems with like how do you have Na3, PO4? Yep. Um, so you always have to balance those first before you can balance the total equation, right? That's right. Because okay, you, so it's why? not going to make any sense otherwise. You need to make sure that those guys are balanced first. If okay. they're not balanced, you're screwing yourself, right? Okay, I was second guessing myself because I was like, that doesn't work out. Why is it? Okay. Okay. I, I should have just went with my gut ultimately. Yeah, always you want to balance, make sure that your your ionic compound is neutral, right? Neutralized, okay? It always needs to add up to zero. That is the very first thing. If that doesn't happen, then you can't balance the equation, okay? Let's see. Okay, so now this here is called a double replacement reaction. You guys should know that, right? Because you did about 150 of those, right? <laughs> Something like that. Seriously. Okay, I like to call it the swinger reaction, right? Because all you're doing is changing partners. You notice the magnesium hooks up with the phosphate, the sodium hooks up with the nitrate. 
and that's going to be your product. So you're just changing partners. Pretty simple, not too complicated. I, I need some type of, yeah, no, I don't get it. Something. Yes, total sense, swingers. Okay. It's good to know I have one person in the class. All right. Sure. I only have to grade one test. I don't have any more to grade, to grade then. I just give all the other ones zeros. No. No, no. Oh, there's other people here too. Are you telling me that? Yes. Okay, I just want to be sure. Okay, so let's make it a little more complicated. This is too easy, right? So this form of the reaction is called your conventional reaction or a conventional, conventional equation or molecular equation. Okay, so your text uses molecular equations, other texts will use conventional equations. Okay, so that means that these guys are, when we're talking about the conventional equation, you don't see the ions represented as individual species, right? But what's really happening is that each of these ions, I mean ionic compounds, since they're in aqueous solution, when they're in aqueous solutions, they're separating into their ionic species. You're saying, what the hell is he talking about? Species and all this crap? Let me show you. So for instance, since this is aqueous, meaning it's in water, it's going to be able to separate into magnesium, two plus, and there's three of them, plus six. nitrate minus. So since they're in solution, since they're in an aqueous solution, the water is allowing them to split up into their ionic forms. Okay. So in the case of sodium phosphate, what are we gonna get? How's that gonna split up in our aqueous solution? Matt. Will you repeat the question, please? How will sodium phosphate split up in our aqueous solution? Um, you're gonna have the wouldn't you have the um, sodium phosphate join with the sodium nitrite? Well, we know that's that's the overall going to be the overall reaction. But right now, you're splitting up in water. You're saying just in water. We're saying this reactant in water. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to the ions? What happens to water? I mean, water. What happens to salt when you put it in water? It dissociates. It dissociates. So it dissociates into its ions. So that's the same thing that's going to happen here with the sodium phosphate. It's going to dissociate. So what ions are you going to have if we're just looking at the sodium phosphate? Phosphate. I'm going to have phosphate. the phosphate. Okay. And what other ion? Sodium. Okay. How many of the phosphate am I going to have? And how many of the sodium am I going to have? So would sodium, would you have three? Well, I have two times the sodium phosphate. So each sodium phosphate has three. So would I have more than three? Six. Okay, so I'll have six. 
Okay, what about the phosphate? How many phosphates will I have? Two. Okay, so let's go to the other side of the equation. Wait, Dr. So, Henry. Yes, sir. Why would you only have two phosphates? Because I have two, my exponents here, I mean my coefficient in front of it is two. So that I would only end up with two phosphates. Oh, okay. So you don't you don't multiply the coefficient or the the coefficient with what is that, the subscript? If there was a parenthesis, yes, because you're talking about the entire thing. Like in the case here with the nitrate, or sorry, nitrite. Oops, sorry. In the case of the nitrite, get it again. Hold on. Sorry, I keep putting my participant list in front of my screen. Okay, so in the case of the nitrite, it has a subscript of two and it's outside the parentheses. So in the case, because you're working with the, a poly, polyatomic ion, that ion is gonna to stay together. It's not gonna separate. But the metal is gonna be able to separate because it's also an ion in solution. So you gotta keep that polyatomic ion together. So you're not gonna lose it. So then that way you're not separating to your individual atoms. Do you kind of get what I'm saying there? Yeah. Okay. So it works as a whole unit. So only if there's a parentheses that you'd multiply by the subscript. So here, there's only two phosphates. And if you take a look at it, that's still going to give you your eight oxygens if you're talking about individual atoms. But they're not going to separate. They're going to still be together. Okay? Because yeah. covalent bonds don't separate in water. Right? Ionic bonds, if they're... Uh, most ionic bonds can separate in water. I shouldn't say most. Some ionic bonds can separate in waters, others cannot. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about right now. Okay? So in the case of... Slide this over. I'm running out of room. I write too big. Okay, so in the case of the magnesium phosphate, it's a solid. By it being a solid means that water can't separate it. Okay? If it was aqueous, AQ, it can be separated. But since it's a solid, it can't be separated. So it's going to stay together. So water can't be that home record and put them apart. OK? So in that case, you're just going to leave it as it is. So if I have a solid, liquid, or gas, I will always leave it as it is. So I'm going to write this down in my notes right now because I know that's going to be on the test. Okay, what about the sodium nitrate, nitrite? I have six sodium. I have six sodium? So it'd, be, it'd be six Na plus, um, and it's an aqueous. And then you would have, um, you would do plus six NO2 negative aqueous. Okay. Dr. Henry, so this would be a ionic chemical equation, right? So this would be an ionic chemical equation. Yes. And the net ionic ones would be the ones where it only includes the magnesium and the phosphite because those are the ones that make it solid, correct? Yep. Okay. 
And in that one, the the net slow, one. Slow, slow down. Let me get everybody else <laughs> caught up. So this is called, it's actually called the total ionic equation. Okay. So because you have everything, all the ions that you can dissociate are dissociated. You can see all of your, you know, all of your skeletons and all that stuff. I can see it all. So now what happens is, let's get to the next part, the part that he's so anxious to get to, is we need to identify what we call spectators. So things that aren't doing anything in the reactions, they're just kind of there to bring people to the party so that they can hook up, okay? <laughs> so in that case, Our spectators in this situation are the ones that are going to be exactly the same on both sides. So if they're hooking up with somebody, they're not a spectator. So is magnesium a spectator? No. 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 Okay. What about nitrite? Yes. Okay. So nitrate is one of our spectators. We're just going to cross it out on both sides because it's exactly the same on both sides. Okay, and what about sodium, the sodium ion? Yes. Yeah, we've got six of them over here, and it's aqueous, six of them over here, and it's aqueous. So those two, the nitrite and the sodium, are our spectators. Simple. So then this allows us to write our net ionic equation. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, our net ionic equation. So our net ionic equation is it's just what's going to be left over after we get rid of our spectators. So the ones that are actually hooking up or doing stuff in the reaction. So you guys understand why the states are important, why we have to put the N, why we have to put the AQ. Yes, because they let us know what's going on and what's being formed. That is correct. How are you feeling about it, Maddie? Good. Mauricio? I'm feeling good about it. Feeling good about it? OK. So you guys ready to do your own? Yes, sir. OK. OK, so let me see. Let me see. Let me think. Let's do this. Dr. Henry, wait. I just want to ask. OK. Solids and, and gases, are all, they always stay the same, right? Solids, liquid, and gases. They always okay. stay the same. They won't be broken down. OK. OK. Okay, so let's say we have, okay. See you guys in, I'll give you guys what? We'll take about 
five minutes, ten minutes. Be nice, Dr. Henry. Be nice. I'm always nice. Okay, twelve like, minutes. Ten to fifteen. <laughs> okay, rooms are open. Who? Me? No, 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 me. Oh. Like our groups. Yeah. yeah yes. Sorry, Christian. I had asked if you were good with doing that. Oh yeah, for sure. Sorry. There we go. Muchas gracias. No problem. There we go. Does somebody still need me to do um, the total ionic? What's the CPL target? Where does members? Anybody? Yes. Okay. Are you done driving? Yeah. All right, sure. <laughs> um, I actually got it. I think I have it right. I'm still working on it though.
So who's doing the net ionic uh, equation? I think that would be us, um, but I'm not sure how to do it if I'm being honest. Uh, I can do it. Okay. Don't forget your charges. Is that N O lowercase O or is that N capital O? Okay, let's see. This is what Mauricio puts down for us. Sorry, I meant to put a capital O. I tried okay. to fix it, but it won't let me. Oh, because I, I have control. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, piece of cake. I am not used to looking at it like this at all. So what about your charges for your ionic equations? Well, the V would have a plus three charge. The NO4 would have negative one. The calcium would have a plus two. And then the hydrogen sulfate would have a negative one. Okay. So you want to make sure that you include your charge, your charges when you're doing your total ionic equation. Let's see. That's a big minus. Okay, good job. So you guys feel you have the hang of this? Kind of, sort of. Oh. Kind of, sort of. So, Dr. Henry, do we put the charges in the net ionic as well? Yep. Yeah. And Mauricio put them in here for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. He's using the little up thing to say it's up. Good job. And the spectators would be the calcium and the per nitrate. Okay. Good job. Okay, no problem, right? Okay, so let's move on. See if I can get the rest of everything working.
Okay. Okay. Yes. Was the uh, the Chem 101, the, the homework number four, the stoichiometry, is that due the 12th? On Monday? Yeah, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, you should, you should be able to get to that part. Okay. In theory. I got 18 minutes. I mean, I have 12 minutes. I can do wonders. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Okay, so what we have, we have a couple of type of uh, chemical reactions. Uh, I talked to you guys about the double replacement reactions. It's also sometimes called the precipitation reaction because you get a precipitant or one of your reactants, you get a precipitant form. So you guys are very familiar with that. So that has to do with solubility, okay? Um, these are the rules to solubility, but I've also given you guys a solubility table and uh, I believe I also typed out the rules for you for solubility, okay? And solubility is, um, is when we can determine whether a substance is going to be able to be precipitated or not. If it's soluble, that means it's able to be in solution, right? It's maintained in solution. If it's insoluble, that means that you can't dissolve it in anything. You can't break it down into anything. It's a precipitate. So if you have two things that are coming together and they're insoluble, means that you're going to get a precipitant form. Okay. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now solubility can be played with by using temperature. And so if you put a lot of heat or energy into it, you can make almost anything that is perceived to be insoluble, soluble, right? If you put energy into it, because then that allows stuff to be broken down. But we also have cases where um, normal temperature, where we're not putting any energy in it, it's going to remain insoluble. And so um, when we're making reference to solubility, we're often talking about reactions norm done normally without having to put energy in, okay? Or in some cases, the addition of certain chemicals under higher concentrations will cause them to be insoluble rather than soluble, okay? So these are the general rules for solubility. So group one metals, um, their ions are gonna always be soluble. So if they're with something, they're going to be soluble. So for instance, sodium chloride. If I put in water, what happens? What, what happens to sodium chloride when I put it in water? It dissociates. It dissociates, meaning it's soluble. Okay. So lithium chloride, potassium chloride. So anyone in group, met, group one metals, they're always going to be soluble. Okay, so ammonium is always going to be soluble. So anything that's with ammonium, okay? Don't mistake ammonium and ammonia. What is the difference between ammonium and ammonia? Ammonia only has three, uh, three hydrogens and ammonium has four. Okay, and a positive charge, right? Yes, so it's an ion. So ammonium, NH4. Does this, the solubility, does this like a direct correlation to the activity series? It's not a direct correlation to the activity series. The activity series is different. We'll get to that. Don't worry. I'm getting you there. I'm building <laughs> up here. Keep your pants on. Okay. So halide, for the most part, not always, but for the most part, halide ions are soluble, but there are exceptions. And I'll talk to you about those exceptions in one second. Okay. So do you guys know what halides are? Would that be the, no, that's not. Who's the halogens? Okay. That's what I was going to say, but I was looking at them going, no, they're not on there. The halogens are the halides. So who are the halogens? Uh, 
fluorine, chloride, or chlorine, bromine, iodine, and AT. Okay, so anytime that you have a halide, halide is that negative, is the negative ion, right? The halide ion. So that's fluoride, chloride, bromide, right? So all of those have a negative one charge. All of those guys are going to be soluble except, except when they're with silver, mercury one, and lead two. Okay? So when they're with silver, mercury one, or lead two, they're going to form precipitate. They're going to be insoluble. Okay, acetates, bicarbonate, nitrate, and uh, chlorate, uh, those guys are going to be pretty much always insoluble. There are a few exceptions, but they're very rare, so they're not even mentioned in most cases. Okay, so did you guys get that? Acetate, bicarbonate. And you notice it's a bicarbonate, it's not carbonate. That's gonna be important. Nitrates and chlorates are all gonna be soluble, okay? So anytime you have something with those guys, they're not gonna form a precipitate, okay? Now, sulfates are gonna be soluble except with silver, uh, barium, calcium, Mercury one, lead two, and strontium. So basically, sulfates are going to be soluble with everything except silver, group two metals, and mercury one, and lead two. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Henry, yep. you said group two metals, so is magnesium a consideration or an exception? Yeah. Magnesium okay. is the exception. Yeah. Okay, because I was like, okay. I don't see that one on it. Yeah, magnesium. So it's kind of funny. So magnesium is one of those that if you have the right amount, it's going to be soluble. But if you go over that amount, it becomes insoluble. Okay. Okay, so things that are insoluble, so those are going to be uh, compounds that have carbonates, chromates, uh, phosphates, and sulfides. Now, again, if we put these guys with group one metals, they're going to be soluble. Okay or if we put them with ammonium, they're gonna be soluble. So if they're with group one metals, everything is gonna be soluble, right? So group one metals, they like to be free, right? Nobody can hold them down. They're the wild childs, okay? Now, hydroxides are gonna be uh, insoluble, except for group one metals, so like sodium hydroxide, um, and also, Barium hydroxide is also soluble. You got to put a little, give it a little love, it'll drop into solution. Okay. Questions, concerns, cash. Not too much to remember. So if you're with group one metal, are you going to be soluble or insoluble? Soluble. Soluble. Okay. If you're with a halide, are you going to be, for the most part, are you going to be soluble or insoluble? Soluble with exceptions. Okay, with exceptions. Okay. If you're a sulfate and a group two metal, are you soluble or insoluble? Insoluble. Soluble. Are you sure? Group two metals. Oh. No, not soluble. Okay, so most of the group two metals are going to be insoluble. Okay, 
Uh, if you're a transitional metal and a carbonate, are you going to be soluble or insoluble? Can you repeat that? If you're a transitional metal uh -huh. and carbonate, are you soluble or insoluble? Insoluble? Insoluble. Good job. Okay. You guys feeling it? You good? Yeah. Okay. So now you know solubility. So since you know solubility, you guys should be able to predict what's going to happen when I put two things together, right? Supposedly. Supposedly. So that's our, <laughs> our, our next goal. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about the, let me pull it up. Maybe I won't pull it up. Not pretty. Okay. So the way the activity series table works is um, it's a high, it's based upon hierarchy, right? So if I'm use a different color here, you see my purple? Does that yeah. look good on that blue? Let's do brown, brown will look better. Okay. So if we have a solution, let's say we have copper nitrate. Is that going to be soluble or insoluble? Copper two nitrate. Soluble. It's going to be soluble because. Soluble. All nitrates are going to be, be soluble. So I have copper two nitrate, and I put in lithium metal with it. On this, uh, this is called the activity series table. I'll give mm -hmm. you guys a better one. This one looks like crap. I don't know what happened to my really good one. Lithium is higher than copper. Do you guys see that? Yeah. So since lithium is higher than copper, lithium can replace the copper in the solution. So then we'll get a reaction Yes, Alberto, you can use the rules on the next exam. You'll get a reaction. And I should put aqueous. So you'll end Does up lithium with- lithium solid? Yes, thank okay. you. Sorry. So you'll end up with lithium, nitrate, and then your copper will precipitate out. Okay. Now, if the metal is below the metal that's in that solution, you're not going to get a reaction. So, for instance, if we have silver plus copper to nitrate. We're going to get no reaction. 
Fish cake? Questions, concerns, cash? Or can I have an off topic question? I may have an off topic answer. Um, I saw on Canvas that our test corrections were due Saturday, but I know some people still don't have theirs graded. Is it still going to be due Saturday? No, it's not going to be due Saturday. It's it'll be you'll have a week till when I finish grading the last person's test. Okay. So it'll be adjusted. Okay. So, Doctor, I just to make sure, just because so because silver nitrate is soluble and the copper nitrate is soluble, that's why you get no reaction because they're both soluble with each other. No, you don't get any reaction because in terms of activities, so silver is less active than copper, so um, you can't okay. replace it. Okay, so it's kind of a hierarchy scheme. Lithium is very reactive. It's going to be okay. able to replace anything in solution. Okay. Because you know? it's I see it the now. highest on the totem pole. Okay. Okay. So the lower they are, it's they're the they're not going to have reactions. Yeah. So if okay. it's so you it, it's all relative, right? Because yeah. copper's here and then silver's below it, right? So since silver is below it silver metal won't be able to replace copper. So okay. if we had this reaction, we had copper plus silver nitrate. It would replace it. It would replace it. Okay. And this is one of my favorite questions to ask on an exam. Oh, wow. No, oh, did I say that out loud? Oh, thank you, <laughs> Dr. So then, Henry. Is this in the book? This is in the book. Okay. So if you go to the index, go to activity series. Okay. Although they don't have a pretty table for you, though. But you're going to get us one? Yeah, I'll give you. You guys actually do have one in resources. I have to look at to find out which one it is. Okay. Actually, a nice one. How do we know if it's a nice one? <laughs> a word for it. You will take, take your word for it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's right. OK. Okay. Simple? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to stop here.